good old United States of America. We have some exciting news. I don't know, maybe we should have a drum roll for this. According to the CDC, cases of sexually transmitted disease are on the rise. <laughs> America is back, and so is our chlamydia, everybody. It's... Uh, for some reason, they have changed the term STD to STI. Did you know this? No. Which is very bad news for the students at the Systems Technology Institute, but... <laughs> SCIs went way down at the start of the COVID pandemic, but they're now headed back up the charts with a, a bullet. COVID was like, we, our work is done here, herpes. You take over from here. <laughs> Speaking of sexually transmitted diseases, Donald Trump, our fondling father, has, um, has reemerged. He sat for a 45-minute blab fest with Tucker Carlson last night on Fox News. It's quite a chat. Trump covered everything from World War III, which he seems to be rooting for, to wanting to take the president of China to a Broadway show. And also, he, as he often does, managed to shoo in some thoughts about the N-word. You don't mention, I call it the N-word. You have two N-words. You don't mention either one of them. OK, that's good to know. Go on. <laughs> I'm talking about nuclear, 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 nuclear. I never mentioned the word nuclear. You never heard me mention the word. Yeah, except for the, except for 400 times in the last minute and a half. Nobody talks about nuclear. The problem, the problem we have, the biggest problem we have in the whole world. It's not global warming. It's nuclear warming. What is this batty old man talking about, nuclear warming? You think he means nuclear war Ming? I don't, maybe the reason <laughs> nobody's talking about nuclear warming is because it, what the hell are you talking about? I did a Google search for nuclear warming. There were 1,200 results, and the top one was a song on Spotify by a band called The Transplendent, which was actually pretty good. But the reason <laughs> nobody's talking about nuclear warming is because it, that's not a thing. This interview was terrible. Not once did Tucker stop and say, Huh? But it did make one thing very clear. And the fact that Donald Trump is a profoundly stupid person. I think it's important to remember that. He does not have the best words. He is not a stable genius. That mental competency test, he's always bragging that he passed. This is something the average seven-year-old could pass, okay? At one point, this horny old goat felt it important to explain how good-looking the Chinese interpreter was. So when I dealt with President Xi, I was with him the whole weekend. He had an incredible, I, I'm not allowed to say it because it's very impolite and very politically incorrect, a beautiful female interpreter. She was very beautiful. Today, if you say it, they'll say, this is terrible. You're not allowed to say that. But she was very professional. She spoke every word for him. <laughs> very professional. Yeah, well, that's, you know, that's what interpreters do. They speak every word for the... <laughs> Professionally, Putin did this to him too. He brought on a, uh, an attractive interpreter. To, that's all you have to do, get a hot interpreter. Trump starts lifting sanctions like they're potato <laughs> chips. And Tucker Carlton just sits there like a doofus. He never interjects. He's like, oh, how hot was she? I mean, <laughs> he's terrified because three weeks ago, we found out he'd been texting his coworkers about Trump saying, I hate him passionately. He's a demonic force. He's a destroyer. He's not going to destroy us. I've been thinking about this every day for four years. And then after thinking about it for four years, Tuck sat down with the demonic force and slobbered all over his Christmas ornaments. This <laughs> Tucker Carlson asked Trump if being arrested would mean he'd pull out of the race. Trump said it wouldn't. And I believe pulling out is not Donald Trump's thing. If it was, <laughs> we wouldn't have Don Jr. and Eric if it was, OK? But the, um, it was an embarrassing interview. You know, Fox News is hosting the first Republican primary debate in August. I don't know, maybe they can hold it in whatever prison Trump is locked up in. If he's not going to pull out, <laughs> let the inmates be the audience. Tucker can finally meet all the white supremacists who love his show. It's a... <laughs> Meanwhile, Mike Pence has been on fire lately. He was at the University of Alabama last night regaling the crowd with these great stories about his life before politics. I went on to pursue a career in radio. I was, uh, I was a syndicated talk show host in Indiana. I mean, I don't seem like I'm interesting enough to do that for a living. <laughs> but I did. Three hours a day, six days a week. It was kind of like Rush Limbaugh on decaf. 
Yes, decaf and melatonin. It was, and then they had a Q&A with the students, and one of the young women in particular has some very serious concerns. As I wake up every day and I sometimes don't feel safe because I'm a woman and I feel that that's being taken away. Really? By who? Um, by our president. Oh, whoa, Joe Biden's taking your vagina away? That's, I mean, my God, the man can barely ride a bicycle. And I just want to know, do you think that that's going to change in the near future? Do you think that that's going to get better? Because I'm worried that um, the idea of being a woman is being taken away by, um, by the Democrats. Well, let me assure you, help is on the way. <laughs> okay. That's right. Captain Lady Parts is here to save the day. The idea that a woman is asking Mike Pence about women's rights being taken away indicates to me they might want to have another look at the minimum GPA required to get in the University of Alabama, but <laughs> Mike Pence loves this sort of thing because it's a, it's a kind of non-issue that his base absolutely feasts on. American people know the answer to the question, what is a woman? a female human being. Well, you know what they say, when, when mother's away, it's time to play. And Mike Pence has not formally entered the race for president, but he's polling at about 7%, which puts him in third place, according to a new morning consult poll. That poll has uh, said Trump has opened up now a 33-point lead over Ron DeSantis. Not a great sign when you're down 33 points to a guy who just got arrested for giving a porn star the least satisfying four seconds of her life. But <laughs> the competition is heating up. Senator Tim Scott today uh, announced that he is launching an exploratory committee while he thinks about maybe running for president, which will be an uphill climb. Most people don't know who Tim Scott is. He's a Republican senator from South Carolina who owned an all-state insurance agency. And if he were to win, the nominee, that would make him the second black all-state guy turned president, the first, of course, being David Palmer from uh, 24. <laughs> you know, in other political news, Congressman George Santos is doubling down on this claim that he's Jewish. He told a couple of reporters he has DNA tests that prove his Jewish heritage. He says the tests... Not only do they prove he's Jewish, he proves also he is Barbara Streisand, which is... <laughs> Santos made this claim to a couple of writers for Jewish Magazine. He, he didn't offer any proof, but we can take him at his word, right? I mean, it's not, not like he's lied to us before. But here's the thing. <laughs> Having a tiny bit of Jewish ancestry does not mean you're Jewish. You know, Guillermo took one of those tests. This is true. It revealed he is 0.8%... Ashkenazi Jewish. <laughs> Guillermo, do you feel being point Ash... Wait a minute, where's Guillermo? Where did Guillermo go? Anybody know where Guillermo is? Guillermo? Oh, hey, Guillermo. Jimmy, Bubola, please, it's Passover. I'm trying to have a Seder with my Miss Puha. Your Miss Puha? What are you eating there, Guillermo? Masto, Jimmy. I love masto and mini chevis. Uh-huh. Makes me mashugana. It makes you mashugana? Yeah. Salud. Guillermo, what do you call that, that hat you're wearing on your head? Oh. Guillermo, uh, what do you call that hat on your head? Uh, ayamaka. Oh, very good. Happy Passover. You know, you're a few days late on the Seder there. <clears throat> so, suit me. What are you going to do? <laughs> wow, that's... He's, I don't know if he's... No, he's... Not sure if he's Jewish, but he's one hell of an actor, that's for sure. <laughs> hey, we have a fun show for you tonight. From Abbott Elementary, Quinta Brunson is with us. And... <laughs> it is week three of their week-long residency. Metallica is here. Metallica... <laughs> One of the legendary bands that had a huge surge of popularity among young people because their song, Master of Puppets, was on Stranger Things. They'll be playing that song for us later on. But first, since we have kind of a puppet theme, we thought it would be fun to take the band to... There's a theater, the Bob Baker Marionette Theater. It's a popular children's theater. And we, so we sent Metallica there to give the guys a chance to actually master some puppets. <laughs> 
Hello, welcome to the Barbica Marionette Theatre. The Palace of Puppetry awaits. Um, can I get your names, kids? I'm James. I'm Kirk. Hey, I'm Lars. I'm Robert. Hello, very nice to meet you. Puppet can be anything you may come to life, like a sock in your hand or a blanket or you name it. But these puppets can have strings. So essentially what these are, these are marionettes. So if you look at the top, these are called airplane controls. And then in the front you have the foot bars. When you kind of take that off the paddle, this is what makes it walk. So it has strings on the side that connects to the legs. So when Ginger rocks this left and right, these strings go to the knees. In the front there's hand strings, and there's even a butt string that kind of makes it lean over and bow. How long does it take to become a true puppet master? Yeah, it's a great question. Normally, many years. Today, we have an hour or so. Okay, then. <laughs>